Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to tie this fly, which was a request from one of the viewers who saw it in one of my previous videos as an example, and he asked me if I could do this fly, so let's go into it. For this one I will use TMCO 2487 barbless in size 14, like a general size, uh, but you can go down or up size depending on conditions in the water and insects that you are uh, that are present around you for the body trailing shock and trailing shock i will use this wapsi antron dubbing and for the trailing shock i will use ginger variant for the body i will use hexagen hexagenia and ginger variant mixed together but not mixed as uh, one single mix but more like two strands and that's the trick I'm gonna show you in this video. Uh, next material I'm going to use is CVC for the wing and forming the double bubble. After wings uh, here comes the thorax and here I have a blend that I made uh, of uh, hair's fur and purple UV dubbing that's all just maybe 10%, maybe 5%, I'm not sure, like, but just a little bit of uh, shiny uh, dubbing in, in the mix with the fur that you that you like. So you can use pink, purple, UV, calibatis, whatever you like, but just give it a little bit of glitter over there. When it comes to thread, it's very important that you, you are you going to use something thin and strong. In this case, I'm going to use Nano Silk by Semperfly, 18 through 0. Uh, very thin, very easy to to work with. Uh, advantages: it's super strong. I can make the uh, V loop dubbing uh, very tight, which is very important because it will make the uh, fly more durable. And uh, you can use some other brand. Obviously, you can Vivas is also good. Uh, Extreme, whatever you choose, you're not you're not going to make a mistake. And one very useful tool for all of this is dubbing twister my favorite choice is this because it's heavy so i think it's brass not sure but it's uh it twists easily like the way the, the the sheer weight of it makes it easy to dub and also the weight makes it easy to close the loop and keep it keep everything secure and tight which is something you want while you're trying tying your flies so without any further ado let's just hop into tying when you have your hooking device in size 14 as i said uh, first thing i want to do is to put some wax on the gsp thread or power thread or whatever you call it depending on a brand i'm using pure pure bees wax and just run your thread a couple of times through it and the reason for this is to make some friction between thread and the hook so it doesn't slip because as probably you know but not bad to repeat uh, I just pull and it's unwinding as you can see uh, that's the property of GSP that's not very good but yeah if you go a couple more winds down the shank it's, it's pretty much secured wax helps uh, securing it so instead of cutting it always slice the GSP because it's easier to cut that way but keep it tight now first thing you want to do is as I said take some cover the well cover the, the hook as much as you want to go into the bend but since this is a curved hook the bend is all over so I want to go deep into the hook and stop somewhere here relatively deep now I'm gonna use tiny bit a tiny, tiny pinch, of, pinch of dubbing here and I'm gonna dub it relatively loosely and you will see the reason for it right now uh, emergers uh, they sometimes have trailing shock be behind them hanging and that's like one of the very definite signs that uh, fly the trout can see is very vulnerable and it can be easily eaten without eaten eaten without running away so what I like to do is instead of making it like an egg sac or hotspot I like to just brush it out with blood crow 
and like don't be gentle here and that is the reason why you need relatively soft dubbing ball because it's easier to brush the reason why I do this is because immediately I got it tapered and it's most it's the thickest near the head part so this is the head part of that old shock you know uh, that's just my way of doing this thing and it makes sense it's easy if if you got it too long just use your scissors snip it off but you still have this nice perfect taper instead of going with scissors down the dubbing and doing it just easy way uh, at this point I like to go back because it's thin thread so I can do this a little bit easier and I like to start my uh, dubbing loop just over here and I'll go all the way down but I forgot to transfer my vise and I like to go all the way down and secure it along the hook shank okay I go tight against this dubbing ball that we made and then go back flatten the thread from time to time I can put the hook back flatten it and now here I started the thread where I want my abdomen to finish and thorax to begin uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna pass that at the moment so I'll just make slight taper over here you can do that with dubbing as well just slight taper as you can see I'm using flat thread much easier to, to do the nice taper but to be honest it's not nearly as important to have super flat underbody for this one as it is when you're doing for example biot bodies now now it's important to use this tool because it, when you hook it on your dubbing loop like so when you hook it as you can see it here it its weight will hold it tight until you take the dubbing and stuff and prepare everything now hexagenia color or whatever color you like is one strand and you'll dub one strand on one side and another color on another side so I just pull this dubbing away in this manner so I, I'm left with these parallel dubbing strands and use it little by little you don't need much to cover this part of the shank Okay, I, I like to invert the hook here. I place everything along the along the thread and then just dub it around the hook. You don't need to do it tightly because pure spinning of the dubbing twister will do this job for you. And then here at the end I'll add some more. So, and that's going to be kind of tapering this dubbing. And you can see that the dubbing noodle is a bit tapered it's also not super tightly spun but that's not of my concern because as i said b dubbing loop technique will solve the problem for me and here i'm adding this ginger variant and you should use less than you used on a, on a in my case left strand so i'll just take out a little bit Mm, it got stuck never mind take another strand so I'll just dub it around as I did with the first one and I will align the beginning here and the length of course should be at least similar in length okay tighten it a little bit now you can see how it looks it's not perfect obviously but it's gonna work nicely next thing to consider is the way how you spin the dubbing twister if you spin it counterclockwise the whole dubbing loop is going to migrate this way so if I spin it counterclockwise it's going to, to spin to migrate towards the tail if I do it without otherwise it's going to, to migrate towards the eye meaning that when you start wrapping it around the body uh, if it migrates towards the rear of the hook the wraps will be tighter and if you wrap it clockwise you will make a little bit of space in between 
again not so important in this case because dumping is thick and it's it, it has a little bit of room to for mistake you don't have to do everything tight and precise but uh, in some instances it's uh, for example if you're doing thread bodies it is important to have it under control now I'm gonna spin it counterclockwise and it spins and then I'll just go with back and forth with my with my finger and I'm left with nicely uh, nicely spun dubbing noodle as you can see it froze onto itself but you can see uh, that color alternates along the way now there is a little bit of room I could have pushed it a little bit further back but since it's GSP one of the reasons is that it's thin and it doesn't and it doesn't take makes too much it doesn't make too much bulk now look at what I if I lose tension it goes towards the back of the hook so I will no matter what I do I will make tight wraps over here tight means adjacent one to another if it was the other way around when I lose some tension I may have make some some uh, space in between those wraps now I like make a wrap tighten make a wrap tighten and everything will be super uh, super tight and that's another reason why I like GSP threads you can cinch on them uh, whereas if you use for example UTC which is perfect for example for thread bodies uh, but it's not very good for this because it's not super strong now couple of wraps along the hook shank to secure everything one two three locking wraps because at GSP I use more locking wraps than I would usually do okay and that's it now you can remove those one two three and go backwards because here is where you want to attach your CDC in this moment I got myself nice body nice trailing shock now when it comes to CDC again I like to use those triang triangular shaped feathers but you can use whatever you want because the loop is what holds the, the, the fly on the surface the loop that you make obviously for this fly you don't need to use super big feather because you're gonna waste too much of it better use something smaller but you're gonna use most of it and if you have some of them that are looking like this mm, I, I would avoid those so I make I take two relatively similar feathers or even same if I can find align the tips like so stroke barbs towards the tips so I can use most of them and then counter spin the bobbin holder counterclockwise so the thread jumps toward the back make one two or three soft wraps and then pull pull all the way and you can see the tips are here okay I'm satisfied how it looks now I'm gonna pull pull up pull up make a round pull up and you got yourself secured feather now I'm gonna make another loop over here make, uh, notice that I left quite a bit of space for the head that's important always plan your head pl plan your fly ahead so okay I'm gonna make this loop over here and then go back if you want you can make half hitch at this moment just to make everything stays secured and usually I don't do this but let's do it so if you if you bounce into your fly the thread can jump and unravel now for this thorax I'm going to use my uh, hairs dubbing and I'm going to use it because it because of its spikiness and you can see I'm using oops it fell out never mind uh, I'm using a little bit of it and I'm gonna make it relatively elongated like so 
I'm going to put that into a dubbing loop. So it's not going. I'm not going to dub it. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to put it in dubbing loop. Pinch it with two strands of thread that I, that I have, so it stays. And then I'm going to spin everything together. Maybe okay. That should be plenty. Uh, so it looks rather rough, but look what happens when I spin the, the twister. GSP locks this very tight and everything first. Locks this very, very tightly. I mean, you can pull it out, that's for sure. But after you wrap it, it's going to be very hard to pull out. What I got well, like this, I got almost like heckle-like effect for the thorax. So. I'm going to do it like so, wrap, stroke back, wrap, stroke back, wrap, stroke back, and repeat the process. And when I reach the place where I want everything to end, okay, I'll go a couple of times with my tying thread around and then secure it. Okay. Now, I'll go back with thread over here. As I said, I want some room for the head. Well, this is not the cleanest of my works, but it's gonna be cool. Now look what happens here. Just brush it out a little bit to suggest some legs. And I'll do that from this side as well because if those hairs stay under the loop they're like useless more or less but if you have them like this they're gonna look like some legs now I like to take the feathers and then just kind of break the rachis here see what happens when I leave it well it doesn't happen now but because it's thin it usually gives a better effect with thicker rachis, you should break it, but thin one, obviously don't, you don't need to. But I like to work with it a little bit. It gives this indent here, and it just keeps the shape, shape into position. Now, pull those barbs back, because all the longer ones, when you secure those feathers, you're gonna use them up. Let me see where am I? I like to do, to keep this at around, midpoint of the hook shank so but you can always take one two three whatever turns check out everything and see if it works for you now if it works just go back and then pull up pull up pull up I like GSP because I can cinch down on this and the thread will actually cinch into the rachis making everything almost indestructible. Pull everything up here and a couple of wraps just to secure it. Now, some good scissors are very important to cut this as close as possible because if you don't, the head won't be as clean as you perhaps want it. Okay. Clean up a little bit and go further back because I want to make whip finish with some dubbing. So first of all, one whip finish that will keep everything in place. And this one is done, making this almost finished fly, as we can see. Okay, make it scruffy again. And now I'll use the same dubbing I used for the shuck. Or, if you want, you can use some other fur that you have in similar color and make a li little nice dub dubbed head. But for that, you need to use like super tiny amount of dubbing. So let's do it. As you can see, I have a really, really tiny amount here. Let me push this back because Afterwards, it's going to be probably in my way. OK. 
Okay, I'm gonna stretch it and dub it. Just looks nice. This is purely aesthetic makeup, call it whatever. And then again, if you remember, you can slice through it or you can just touch it with blade. But make sure that you pull the GSP tight. Now I'll roughen it up a little bit again. And we're done. Okay, so guys, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and see you next week.